Hi, I'm Cash, and welcome to Good Goal or Bad Defending, Premier League edition. This is Liverpool uh, versus the Bournemouth, I believe. So well, let's have a little take a look at this. I don't think um, Liverpool's anywhere near as strong as some people are trying to make out. I think they'll be lucky to get the top four. I think they're going to finish fifth, uh, fourth or fifth. They're going to be fighting in that sort of realm. And they do look very vulnerable at the back. Now, um, uh, I'm just going to play this forward here. I just want you to see what happens here. Right? Let's play this on. Bump. The ball's coming in. And as it's coming in here, you can see he's in plenty of space, this player, right? Here's a wee man. Uh, is that a bad pass in? Yeah, probably, because like, you can go here. Why? Because you want these two players to shift away from him him there. All right? That, that's a really tricky pass to be playing into someone. You've got a man completely free there with no pressure, and you play it there. Now, this is what happens. Boom, look at how terrible that first touch is. Now, because the player's made a terrible first touch, it allows these players to pounce so quickly. And all for the, I think the Van Dijk is, a full, uh, is Virgil there. He's absolutely terrible. There's no way you should be playing that ball into him there. Now, people are going to go, oh, yeah, but he, wa he wants the ball so we can turn under pressure. No, I completely and utterly agree. But not for the first five minutes of the game. At some point, you need to get yourself a foothold in the game, establish a rhythm, and then you can try those risky passes when you've already established a rhythm and your dominance in the game. Not in the first five or ten minutes which is exactly what happens here. Bump, nicks the ball. Van Dyke doesn't really react quick enough to it. And before you know it, the ball's in the back of the net. Really, really quickly, poor from Liverpool. They go 1-0 down straight away. And that just comes from Van Dyke being sloppy at the back. And I will go on a little bit about this because this is what happens, especially with football fans that are completely delusional. They you sort of like get into this concept of what players, because they played well four years ago, they're still that player. They're not. If they played poorly last game, that's who they are. If they played good last game, that's who they are. If they played great four years ago, you don't give them that credit for the next game. Otherwise, what you end up doing is you end up lying to yourself. And when players have passed it or they're not good enough anymore, you keep trying to convince yourself that they are because of the name on the shirt and not the actual football play that's going on. You see it for a lot, like an awful lot. I've seen 99% of people do this and they come up with, oh, well, this player's great. He's been great for years. Yeah, but he's not great for last year. Um, I'll say a classic exa uh, example um, in the uh, current Man United squad is Christian Eriksen. Everyone thinks he's a good football player. He's not. He was. He's not good anymore. So that's you know why United aren't playing him in midfield. But there's hundreds of examples like that. If you actually stop, look, and you see how bad the football player is, um, and you keep rating them what they did before they got injured or before any of that. Yeah, Van Dijk is one of those players. Mark my words. All right, let's go on to the next goal. And here we are, the next goal. Uh, right, little ball into there straight away. Um, coming into Jota. Now, I'm not quite sure if I'm happy with this here. Mm, but he's too busy trying to get away instead of actually getting tired to the man here. Let's have a little look who goes forward. Yeah, see, see him sh shimmering away, shimmering away to mark the space instead of the man that's right next to him. By the way, a Jota right there, his little first touch in to beat that player was absolutely quality. That's what's really m made this goal. Not the pass in from out wide because Jota had a lot to do with it uh, when it came in. The defensive shape right here... It's pretty piss poor, to be fair. Like um, I, these two, he has to be closer. Like he's got, he's given he has so much space and allows him to make that run. Gets spotted there, but then this is a bit of class. The defender does well because what he does, he kind of covers, he covers it in there. So he goes, ha ha, I've got you. You can't really shoot because it's gonna hit me. But then this is when the class comes in. He does a little flick, a little tip, and then actually the defender falls over. So uh, he's terrible on all accounts. I think he should have been closer the whole time and maybe even helped stop the run. Um. You know, across the front of the body there, but uh, and he does fall over, which makes him even worse at the football. Yeah, it looks like I'm starting to cover penalties this se uh, season more and more, because uh, otherwise it kind of chops up and you miss the goal every now and again. So um, it doesn't really look good. But uh, I don't like this this uh, slobber side guy or slobber. I don't know how to pronounce his name. What's this? Okay, as it goes forward, is it a foul? Kind of, but he does both feet off the air, diving. Look at him. I don't. I never like to see that. It looks like a dive to me. <clears throat> is it a, probably a foul? Yeah, maybe. But it still looks like a dive. Is it a penalty? Oh, God knows in the Premier League anymore. They change the rules left and right. But you can see it looks like a dive. That's what I don't like about it. And of course, uh, Salah is actually a poor penalty. He saves it. Bump. So when you're taking a penalty, it's interesting to know, right? So just take it to the zones. That's where Salah's ball is. That's perfect for the goalkeeper. If it's up a bit... It's in the goal because the keeper's hand is only reaches about there, to be fair. So it's really like anywhere up here and you're golden. Anywhere up here and you're golden. Or anywhere like right there and you're golden. When he puts it in that range, that's a, that's a keeper range that is. He loves it there. He's going to save that, that area there. 
And uh, that's where he puts it. So that's not very good at the penalties. But he does tap it in and makes it uh, another goal to the Liverpool. I'm adding this red card in as well because I'm actually putting a compilation together for the end of the season of all the really bad decisions in football. This is another one. This is a red card, apparently. Let's watch this one forward. Right, so both players have got their feet the same height. Both players have got their studs showing, right? We can both... Everyone can agree to that. Remember, there's somebody in the booth at VAR watching this, right? Think about that. They're both going. They're both clearly going for the ball. He's bracing for impact, okay? They're both clearly going for the ball. The ball's gone, and his foot's hit him. And his foot's hit him exactly... Exactly there. Below the knee... Not very hard. He's back trying to back out of the challenge, and the ball is it in there on the on the leg. Is it a red? No. Is it a yellow? Yeah, probably. Now here's the other thing: if this player this player is smart and he's moved his foot out of the way, because what he could have done is just kept his foot up, and both feet would have hit together. And if anyone's played football, you, I guarantee you, it's happened to you when you've both sort of put your um, your studs have both gone up. Both of you have done it, and you both keep your studs up to protect yourselves, and you both clash with your studs. This player hasn't. He's put his foot down on purpose. He's got it there. He hasn't got it in the knee. He hasn't, this guy hasn't really gone over the ball or tried to stamp on him. It's definitely a yellow. Um, yeah, but it's never a red. And if you play it, it looks so much worse when we uh, slow it down. Dush. But in real time, that's really not that bad. Another terrible decision from VAR. Um, I'll see if it gets overturned. I doubt it because uh, people don't like to admit they're wrong. Well, let's, uh, let's get on to the last goal. Okay, here's something I do like from midfielders. Uh, defensively, though, um, not quick enough out to get to this ball. Let's see if I can get the little bit where it comes in before then. Here we go, here we go. So uh, let's watch the ball as it comes in. Boom, here we go, bang. This guy starts to go, but yeah, he's not close enough. He's nowhere near close enough. So look, dump, dump, dump. He's got his whole body shape wrong. Do you see that? Where he's taking that step, right? He's taking the step that way instead of that way to the ball and those things matter in football that one step matters because he would have been there instead of there and uh allows this shot to come off bump goes through to the keeper but here's what i get annoyed with with defenders you've got three people that are trying to block the shot you've got basically three people here when one uh bournemouth defender that's reacting to the ball look they're all stood watching Up it in the net box they're all still stood watching from the shot. That's one of the worst things. I can't stand. Like, none of my players ever do that. Standing still after the shot's been taken, you better run. You, I, sometimes I don't care even if it's a token run because you know you can't get there. You better look like you're putting in the effort. And I think Bournemouth have given up at that point. Um, yeah, but they're, they're quite a decent team, actually, Bournemouth. Uh, I think they're going to cause some people some problems with... Uh, I don't think they're going to, you know, light the league up or do anything fantastic, but um, they're going to be a handful to beat. I'll see you next time. Thank you.